Let's go into Monroe's motivated sequence here. And this is a, a pretty, like I said, it's got six steps, but it's relatively straightforward and probably something that you're more familiar with than you realize. This was uh, Monica Lewinsky giving a TED talk recently about stopping digital bullying uh, using Monroe's motivated sequence along the way. So let's talk about it. Six steps are attention, need, satisfaction, visualization, action, and conclusion. These are the steps in Monroe's motivated sequence. And what we're gonna do is be thinking about the, your own topics that you're thinking of for your um, final symposium. And I'll be kind of adding in a couple of topics that are more just kind of general generic topics that help us think of examples. But please, by all means, if you have examples for your topic, uh, throw them out there. And I'll ask you to do that at various points. So our example topics are donate blood and don't text and drive. So maybe if you wanted to make these more local, you could say like texting and driving is a problem on campus and we need more coordinated blood drive efforts on campus or something like that. So that's why we're going to be tying through all these steps. I, I don't know what I think about this church marquee. I do kind of have a general vendetta against church marquees. No offense to your church, but they're like just some of the dumbest things that I'll ever see in my day-to-day -day life. Um, there's some terrible offenders. I like C C H C H. What's missing? You are get it? Like church. <laughs> it's just a, there's a million of those. Okay. So moving through these steps. All right. The first one is attention. Attention. This is basically just where you hook your audience, gain attention, peak interest. Okay. So that when you think about your um, final symposium for your local issue project or whatever, you're probably going to want to give one person in your group this step. This person will be the person that handles the attention phase. Uh, what type of personality would you want here? If you're just like thinking about your group and your decisions. <coughs> Based on the job that they have. Yeah? Someone who's like outgoing and can like create. Yeah. Yeah. High energy, right? Charisma, enthusiasm, I would pick that person to handle this part probably. Um, their job is to hook the audience, pique the interest. And what are some ways that we would do that for our example topics or for your own topic? So for like giving blood, what's, some, what's an option there? Or like I said, you can think of your own topic. How would we pique interest? You can give a story about like how blood donation saves somebody's life or something like yeah. that. A vivid and specific story, right, about a person who was on the brink or whatever. With true story or made up story? True story. Yeah, I would make it a true story if at all possible. If I told you about the girl that was doing her speech in my class on blood donations, and I was like, why don't you make some true story? And she was like, it is. It was my mom. And then I donated blood that day, um, obviously. But hook your audience. I was thinking that for this one, it could be cool to um, like maybe start with a riddle or something. It may sound cheesy, but if you executed it really well, it's pretty good. So maybe you think like, all right, I'm gonna tell you a riddle. You tell me what it is. You've got an unlimited supply of it. In fact, you've got more than you need. You've got excess of this thing. It's one of the most valuable things in the whole world. In fact, this thing that you own, somebody else needs right now. And it could mean the difference between life and death for them. What do you think it is? Let them do over for a second. Or maybe you just want to say right then, maybe it's rhetorical, and you say, it's blood, right? Coursing through our veins, pumping through our hearts. <clears throat> You've got it. you got more than you need. Somebody else needs it, and today we're going to talk to you about how you can help contribute to that need. Uh, texting, what are some ways we do that? Peak people's interest, gain their attention, yeah? You can tell one of those stories that you see on commercials, it's like, okay, and that's the last thing. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people would come there. <laughs> yeah, you could say like uh, maybe you. Maybe, what how cool would it be if you get up there, you line everybody up, and you you just in silence start writing on the board, and it's one of those creepy last text things in your life. Anybody know what that is? Yeah. Except that message never got finished. It was what James Martin was sending to his wife on his way home from work one day. And right before he clicked A, he collided head on the tractor trailer. Okay, chill dogs, right? That's the way you get audience attention, pique their interest. It's a great thought. You move on there for, to need, right? You build a case here for an insufficiency. This is where you foster a desire for change. So uh, through texting and driving, what might that look like? 
this is the infomer classic infomercial, right? Aren't you so tired of reaching for the remote on your couch and knocking over the bowl of Cheetos, right? Like, this is a need that we have. We need to allevi alleviate this need. Stop this problem once and for all. What's a need for maybe texting and driving? How could you show that need, rather? I mean, if we looked at blood and texting and driving, right? Like and blood, I mean, a big way to show need is how? It's pretty straightforward. Statistics. Yeah, statistics, as they relate to death. What's a great way, by the way, to make statistics more powerful? Like, let's say, I can't remember if we talked about this in here, but let's say, like, the statistics are that, um, you know, four, four million accidents are caused each year uh, in the U.S., probably due to texting and driving, okay? How do we make that more powerful? Local, local maybe? Local, how so? How do we make it, so we look at statistics as they are like here, especially for this is our local project. Be like, so if we just look at the numbers, that means that probably uh, you know, 100,000 of those happen right here in Kentucky. In fact, the Herald Leader reported last year that that was the case, blah, blah, blah. I hope that would be really excessive. So it would be a much lower number than that, I would hope. What's another way we could do that? How do we make a number like 4 million more powerful? Yeah, yeah, you say how many of them resulted in deaths. How many and then of them you don't are college just, students or students off like youth? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Adults. Give it audience relevance, right? So, like, this could affect us, guys, right? I mean, uh, a significant number of those are college students. Let's say you end up with 30,000 of them are college students. That's a great go to that you have right now. But what, what else has a population of around 30,000? Yeah, UK. You could be like, that'd be like every single student at UK getting in an accident, right? Uh, every single one of us. That's a big deal. That's what's happening all across the US. So that shows a need, right? When people start thinking about just like the simultaneous collision of every single person and student at UK, they're like, wow, we have a need here that needs to be addressed. What about for your own topic? What are you thinking of? Any ways that you can show needs for parking? Let's say somebody plans on, decides they still want to do parking. How would you show a need there? Well, it's faster to walk to the hospital than to walk to your car. It's fast. Oh, okay. So you're saying like uh, that just shows that the walk is too long, basically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What else? Yeah. If you like drove back at like if it was at night or something, you had to park your car and you had to walk like back to your dorm. And yeah. It's like dangerous. Yeah. Okay, well, that's a dangerous place. Lots of people get jumped up. Okay, do you think there's information that we could find specifically that would tell us on the number of those people and when that happens? And I would say we probably can, right? You can probably go and look at the just the UK student newspaper and say, here's how many people got jumped. It's in probably like a targeted area too. Okay. Like because it's known that that's where college students have to park. Okay. <coughs> yeah. So those are great, great thoughts. Rachel, and we'll go. To well, I was just gonna like for me, like personally, like my job is like I'm a, a volleyball coach, so like on the weekends, like after private classes, I have to leave immediately and usually drive like two hours away. It takes me like like a whole hour just to get my car, I have to drive to my dorm, yeah. get all my stuff instead of just like taking my stuff to my car that's like really close to Yeah, that'd be so, a so. great example of the state of the town. <laughs> Jenna, yeah, up? um even like I park in K Lot and I've called like safe cats a couple times just because we were like, Yeah, it's just like <coughs> Be safe. They literally don't answer. Oh, like, wow. There is like something that can There's help a, with that, but they don't answer. If they're not answering, that's a huge local problem yeah. that could be addressed in someone's speeches. If Safe Cats isn't offering the service they say they'll provide, yeah. that's a big deal. Something twice. That's okay. unsettling and should be resolved, and you could propose how to do that. Yeah, like my RA has like kind of set this down like a couple times because she's like, like her friends, like not that long ago, got like jumped walking back from Kayla. Wow. Like this year. Yeah, that's a big problem. The university doesn't want that to happen. The question is just, are they doing it or not to stop it? Um, so those are all great, great ways to show the need, right? And with the more specifics we can provide, like if you could say, you know, X number of people were assaulted uh, and it happened in the dark, and, and maybe you, you find out that, that they were possibly walking to their car, like that's a great way to show need. Yeah. So. I'm just gonna say we should like maybe have people like patrolling campus like at all times. Like I never okay. like see like I know like we have like the campus police or anything. I've never seen anybody like walking around like patrolling or like, okay. like, like lights out, big lights. Yeah, like, adding you know, more lights could be a great solution. So, but it sounds like from the parking thing, we'll have to move on for the sake of time, but it sounds like from the parking thing, like two different things. So it's an inconvenience, but it's also a potential safety hazard. So if that was, a, a, and that maybe as you're thinking about your topic, you might say like, look, there's there's multiple reasons, like there's not just one problem with it. It doesn't just stem from 
one area. And we were kind of getting into the next step in our discussion there, which is satisfaction. This is where you introduce a solution and you work to neutralize that need, right? So you say, hey, we've shown you why this is a problem, now here's what we can do to fix it. This is my solution. For something like donating blood, what's the solution? Like, or, or a blood shortage. I mean, what's, what's the, it's pretty simple, right? Donate blood. Donate blood, yes. Donate blood. And you want to make that uh, easy for them and convenient. You'll talk about that in, in the course of your speech. But yeah, that's a pretty straightforward. Texting and driving, what might the solution look like there? That was your issue. It was more of a, like, a national issue. What, what, what might that look like? Just call them. Because like, a lot of like, cars nowadays have like, Bluetooth or there's like, an option yeah. to have a speaker or something like that. You're, you could propose like a campaign like, make calling cool again. Like, nothing is cooler than smashing your phone up against the side of your face, right? Don't you want to have this look? <laughs> uh, in some states. I don't think in Kentucky yet, but it may be. Okay. Yeah. Can you even talk? Like I think in California, you may like not. You can't. It has to be on Bluetooth. Okay. Like you can't. Like I feel like there may be some states where it's like you can't even talk like on a phone through Bluetooth or anything. So, so yeah. So, so it would vary based on. So you want to be aware of like current laws and things like that for whatever you're proposing. Absolutely. What about for other topics that we talked about? What would some potential satisfaction be for that problem? Like we talked about the issue with the locking doors. Anybody want to? Hazard a guess on what a great way to satisfy that problem would be? Put locks on, Put locks on doors. Yeah, yeah. So you might so say it's going to look different. In some, we're going to have to install locking mechanisms. In some, maybe we take a keyed lock and we just make it a turnable lock. Um, you know, so you really <coughs> get into some specifics there, but in a way that neutralizes that need effectively. The visualization stage is a really fun one. This might be where you would uh, assign someone that's kind of like creative and has. Uh, a tendency to, to maybe think outside the box a little bit more. This is where you kind of imagine for your audience what this is going to look like. Imagine a world uh, with and without your solution. I think about the uh, guy that used to do like every movie preview. Do you remember this guy? And he always started off like, in a world where you know, bottled water doesn't exist. You know, one man has to you know, filter his own water. Uh, this is where you visualize. You do the same thing that movie previews do. You, you put people into this world in the scene with and without your solution. So uh, going back, what's another topic that we, we kicked around here that we hadn't um, talked about yet in, in the rows? Let's go back to texting and driving while we're jogging our memory. Texting and driving, visualizing a world where there are no more accidents due to texting and driving. What are some ways that we can do this? Yeah, Mark. Um, it's kind of morbid, I guess, but you could find like, a specific case where someone died and post, like, show a picture. <coughs> yeah. They would still. Yeah, Mario, you're like, are you reading my notes? Like, that's what I had on my notes. Yeah, okay. I should have see you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Through here. Uh, yeah, let's just take it a step further. Like, show their picture and say they would still be here. Let's just, let's just turn the screws, so to speak, to use a really gross um, idiom. Maybe related to thumb. We what? still have a a mother would still have a son, right? Or, or let's say we show a picture of a high school senior. He would have gotten to go to prom, right? Just made a senior night. And finally he realized his dream career, which is to be a pediatrician. He would probably be helping kids right now have a better life, right? Maybe raising kids of his own. But he's not. Because of texting and driving. Imagine a world where James lived on, and so did a million other people that have already died, blah, blah, blah. Yeah? I did my um, high school research paper on texting and driving, okay. and I showed like a really powerful video. Like, I found like one yeah. that would like have an impact on people. Yeah. I showed that for my presentation. Yeah, absolutely. Videos are a great way. And, and your visual product, I'm so glad you mentioned videos, because that visual project that you'll be including is designed to do exactly that. This might be a place where you would want to introduce that. Um, so let's just quick video. It's an extremely simple tool, but also extremely powerful. It can be used to start a poem or finish a symphony. It has transformed the way we work, learn, create, share. It's used to illustrate things, solve things, and think of new things. It's used by scientists and artists scholars and students. It's been to classrooms, boardrooms, expeditions, even 
space. And we can't wait to see where you'll take it next. Introducing the thinner, lighter, more powerful iPad Air. So very creative use of visualization on the part of Apple there, right? It's like, think about the way people are using our product, right? They, before they actually even show you the, they, they like, do the steps in reverse order, right? Before they say the iPad does a lot of cool things like this. They need you to think about those cool things in kind of this backwards way, applying them to a pencil, and like, no, it was the iPad, right? You're like, the iPad in this face. Um, so it was a really nice job of visualizing. Uh, the next step is the action step. This comes before the conclusion, but this is where you encourage your audience to act, okay? And, and it's easy to say, so don't text and drive. Or, um, so, make sure you email President Capilouto and ask him to install more lights in the parking lots or locks on the doors or whatever, right? That, you, that takes no effort and it's likely to result in no effort, right? Why? One is these impediments to action. Um, removing impediments to action is so key. What are the impediments? Like, let's say you wanted people to act by emailing President Capilouto. People were trying to get faculty to, to email and call the state representatives right now and ask them not to cut UK's budget. What are some impediments? If somebody says, hey, uh, you know, people, you should call Matt Bevan and ask him not to cut UK's budget. What's stopping me from doing that? Do you have his email or phone? Yeah, there? nope. I don't, I don't have it saved in my phone. <laughs> Definitely not. That's a problem, right? I have to get online. I have to try to Google that. Or I have to try to find out like, who my state representative is. I'm honestly not even sure like how many state representatives we have or if they're specific to what county I live in. Um, so there's a lot of things like that that are stopping me. Yeah. What do you say? What do I say? Yeah, it's like I don't want to have to like have an awkward phone conversation with somebody's secretary and what do I say? And I don't really know how to formulate that argument. Yeah, that's a great point. These are things that are stopping me. And just like with, and with me in that situation, your audience is going to have things that are stopping them from acting. Hey, email President Capilouto and ask him to install more parking lot lights. Okay, but like what kind and how many and where and what's his email address and is it really going to get to him? And, and these are all questions that I don't know. So you want to do things like answer FAQs, like whatever kind of questions your audience is likely to have about taking action, you want to answer those, those frequently asked questions. Simplify the process for them. What's a way that you could simplify the process of getting your audience to, like let's say, email President Capilouto? How could you make it easier on your audience? Give them his email. Yeah, you can give them his email. How, how so? Find it for them. Yeah, Just find put it. Up there. Put it up there. Absolutely. You could even give them a little piece of paper with it on it. You could uh, you could ask me if you could send a message to the class. We could make that happen, and you could send a message so that way they could click it. They wouldn't have to like read it off paper and remember how to spell Capilouto and potentially get that wrong. They could just copy and paste it from their own computer screen. Like, these are all things that simplify that process. Clarify expectations, right? So I mean, don't shoot for the moon. Recognize that your audience is likely to do little to nothing in order to follow along with your solution. So, so lower your expectations a little bit and clarify them. Say, hey, listen, we're not asking you to go stand with a sandwich sign outside you know, the president's office all day. We're just asking you to send one email, that's it. Literally can take you 30 seconds. Um, do as much work for your audience as possible. Again, doing those things like finding that information out, like, uh, like we were talking about, you know, uh, finding out what to say. Maybe you give them some tips on what they could say. Like maybe in that message that I was saying you could say that, you could say, here's some things that you might want to include. And just maybe do bullet points so that they're not just like copy and pasting the message. But like talking about the safety concerns, talking about the um, the convenience concerns, talking about increased tuition but, but no increase in services provided and stuff like that. So those, you could just be doing this work for them and making it as, as uh, easy as possible. And also for bonus, you, know, you can establish urgency. How, how good do you do at doing things that aren't on a timeline, timetable? If I were to say like, hey guys, I just need you at any point during the semester to write me a five page paper, just turn it in whenever. When, when is it? Almost everyone going to turn it in. Yeah, yeah like, like the, 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 this question will be answered. When's the latest I can turn it in? And then it'll be turned in then, right? So establish a time to say, like, listen, guys, the budget comes out, uh, the budget's proposed in a month. We've got to send this message before then. In fact, the earlier we send it, the better. 
Because if people walk away saying, oh, I can, I can take care of this problem any time, then that time will never come, right? They'll just say, you know what, I'll take care of it any time. There's no urgency, there's no need to do anything about it today, and so they're not going to do anything about it today or the next day or the next day. Nothing will ever happen uh, most of the time. For your conclusion, this is where you put a bow on it, okay? You summarize, you clean up loose ends, and this is where you turn up the rhetoric. It's, it's just like a conclusion on a paper. So, so maybe you finish that story that you started. Maybe you go back and you visualize a little bit more. Maybe you've got some, so I've got some endings for um, like blood, giving blood and texting. So like you got five liters of blood in your body right now, but you only need four and a half. Give away a pint, and not only will you get it back, but you'll be saving someone's life in the process, right? You got nothing to lose. Donate blood, blah, 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 blah. Or how about this one? This is a great thing here for texting and driving. Um, so put the phone away, guys, because texting and driving is nothing to LOL about. Uh, I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> Those are good ways to put a bow on it to wrap it up and to really leave with some impact. Here's the road motivated sequence in a real life ad, and then we'll spend the last like eight minutes of class giving you some time to work on your contracts and talk about expectations. So here we go, Monroe's motivated sequence. I think you're gonna Hey guys, Justin here. There are some things that just come with being a team. Beat girl like crazy, I can't stop that. Hormones kick in, I don't wanna stop that. And then there's this. I can't stop that. That's why I use proactive, because there's no way I'm going to let a bunch of sins get in my way. You want acne out of your life? Join Justin. Use proactive and get control over those zits. I hold the mic up to my chin a lot, so I was starting to get acne in my chin, and uh, proactive definitely helped out a lot. Proactive is an easy three-step system that works for all ages, all skin types. I used to think that proactive was only for the hardcore cases. Guess what? It's also just right for kids like me. It's totally easy. It's like one, two, three, done. So you don't have to worry about it anymore. It's pretty chill. Stop worrying about your skin. Order Proactive now and we'll send you our three-step system for only $19.95. That's just $19.95 to keep those breakouts away. I started using Proactive after all of the acne treatment. It goes on and on. So I thought you guys would like that. I know you're all big stuff. So anyway, you can see how that works and you've probably seen that in a million other commercials too. So here's what I want you to do next in the last like seven minutes. I'm going to give you some great